Hi loves, welcome back for another video or welcome if you're new here. If you are new to my channel, my name is Cassie. I make beauty and lifestyle videos on this channel and I am a filmmaker living in the Washington DC area. Basically, the opportunity to go to Buffer Festival was very exciting for me. It's the reason that I'm sitting here today because I want to do kind of like a story time recap style video and talk you guys through the highlights of the weekend, show you some B-roll and pictures. I really thought this would be a fun way to switch things up instead of a traditional vlog because I am notoriously bad at vlogging events like this. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you have been around for a while, I do want to apologize really quickly for being gone for a couple weeks on this channel. I was, I feel like I had a good streak going uploading pretty much every Friday and I just totally fell off of it when I came back from Buffer and it's been like three weeks now, which is crazy, but I promise you that I'm going to keep working on it. I'm really trying to get to the point where I'm pre-filming so I actually have videos ready ahead of time instead of like stress editing the night before, the morning of, etc. So anyway, without further ado, I will go ahead and get into it. I do just want to start by saying that Buffer Festival was an absolutely incredible experience. If you guys watch YouTube or just enjoy like short form, short film kind of content, I definitely recommend going. Also, Toronto is a beautiful city, so that's enough reason to go, honestly, because it was so fun just being there, getting to experience a little bit of it, and seeing some really incredible work. So let's back up and start from the beginning. I went on this trip with my roommate, Michelle. She is a really awesome person, and I feel like we really bonded through this trip. We started on Thursday, the 27th, I think, of September, bright and early. We left our apartment at 4.15 in the morning, which was absolutely insane but our flight was right at 6 a.m. I believe and as much as that was exhausting it was probably the best way we could have started this trip because we went and just hit the ground running as soon as we got to Toronto we got to go to the insight day for Buffer Festival which was very business focused but also super interesting we got to sit down and listen to different panels anywhere from you know being a creator on YouTube and what it's like and kind of like sharing that with the industry side of things so that was interesting because of course I know what it's like to be a creator. Hi, I do this. <laughs> but it was also interesting to hear different perspectives. They had this guy that was like the head of digital at Star Wars, which I'm like, what? Like, this is so sick. So it was just like a lot of really cool little tidbits and discussions. And it was a neat way to kind of get started for Buffer Festival. I think my favorite speaker of the Insight Series Day was definitely Jack Conti, I think is how you say his name. He is the CEO of Patreon and he is an incredible passionate person and a great speaker. It's very clear that he is so passionate about not only his own creative work but helping other people to be able to focus on their projects and not have to worry about things financially which is just amazing. Obviously you probably have heard of Patreon, it's a very big company at this point. But getting to hear his story, how he got started, how he kind of fell into founding Patreon was fascinating and I just really enjoyed hearing from him. After we finished up, we went ahead and headed to our Airbnb to check in and we got to see our incredible view. From the balcony of our Airbnb, you could see the CN Tower. And I mean, if you think of Toronto, you're thinking of the CN Tower because it's such a just like, well-known landmark and a beautiful structure and just so cool so getting out on that balcony it was just like the most insane view and it was like wow like this is a real thing we are in toronto and this is awesome <laughs> once we got all checked in we went ahead and walked around the area that we were staying in a little bit and we got some thai food and just settled in for the night because we were exhausted again we left our apartment at 4 15 that morning so it was definitely a chill and laid back day but a great way to kick off the buffer experience getting to hear from some different creators and people in the industry and really just kind of get the ball rolling. On our first night, we had just gotten to sleep probably for about four hours and the fire alarm went off in our Airbnb and we were staying in like a straight up tower. We were on the 30th floor. <laughs> Now I can laugh about it, but being woken up by a fire alarm at three in the morning, processing that first of all, but then also processing how high up you are and how many stairs you have to climb, that was an experience. I still kind of feel like I dreamed it, but I was sore for the rest of the weekend, so I know I did not. <laughs> Poor Michelle and I, like, Kind of got ourselves together as much as we could we're like all right it's cold so we threw on jackets and like shoes and stuff and then proceeded to climb down 30 flights of stairs only to get outside for about five minutes and then a security guard came out and was like hey guys sorry false alarm it was tripped falsely but you're okay you can go back in and we're like 
All we could do the rest of the weekend was laugh about it, but it definitely was an interesting experience. And I feel like a test of like, just my ability to like go with the flow and be like, you know what, like that happened, it sucked, but like whatever, let's go back to sleep and the rest of the weekend will be great. And you know what, it was. The next day, Friday, we had plenty of free time because the first event for Buffer was a screening at 5 p.m. So we got to sleep in, get a little bit of rest, which was much needed. And then we went and checked some things off of our bucket list. So my major thing, for Toronto was actually to go up into the CN Tower and see the view and just kind of embrace that whole experience. It definitely was a little bit pricey, but I think it was completely worth it. The view from the top was so, so pretty and just unreal. And I had to kind of disconnect a little bit from the fact that I was so high up because honestly, I'm terrified of heights, but I just couldn't pass up the chance to experience that and see Toronto from that like crazy height and just kind of absorb it all. And I definitely recommend going up to the CN Tower. I know it's such a tourist trap, but at the same time, time it was such a beautiful view and because you can walk all the way around you get to see the water and you know all the buildings and just the city and it's so pretty and I just I can't recommend it enough I was blown away and I you know like that was the first thing we did that day so it was like check okay I'm good like what else can Toronto bring me because this is all I really wanted <laughs> we also made a stop at Tim Hortons because obviously that is something that you have to do when you're in Canada if you're a tourist at least but I feel like everyone in Canada loves Tim Hortons and if you haven't been, you definitely should go if you end up in Canada at some point. We decided higher scale Dunkin' Donuts, like the prices are really, really good, but I'd say the quality is above that. So it was really great. We enjoyed having some little Timbit donuts and lattes and all of that good stuff. They also have pretty good sandwiches. So honestly, 10 out of 10 Tim Hortons, huge fan. I miss you. Please come farther south because there are some up in like Maine and like the Northeast US but definitely not as far south as DC. So I'm gonna need that to happen because I miss it already. After our day just kind of exploring and walking around Toronto, it was time to go home and get ready for our first night and like actual screening at Buffer Festival. And I have to say the first one was honestly probably my favorite screening. It's really hard to pick one because they all were really cool and like special for their own reasons. But the empowerment and acceptance screening was just such a amazing way to start things off. It was a bunch of really incredible creators and they had such good and inspiring and wholesome messages. And there was one that Megan Challenges made and I've watched her and followed her on Twitter for a really long time and have always just looked up to her for like how true to herself she is and how she literally gives zero fucks. She will just tell it like it is and I just have always looked up to her, but her video was absolutely amazing. I'm sure it's up on her channel by now. It was about the passing of her grandmother and she was really close to her grandmother and so it was a really difficult kind of thing that she went through and so after the screening I got to go up to her and just kind of have a moment. Honestly I broke down a little bit because she really just went about grief in such a beautiful way and just kind of told the story so that we all kind of felt like we knew her grandmother and it was so universal because everyone goes through grief and losing someone they love at some point in their life and I have unfortunately lost some people that I love in my life and it was something that I just connected with at like a spiritual level and I just had to thank her for that and just tell her what a beautiful project I thought it was. So that was the first and not the last time that I cried during this weekend. <laughs> there was also the documentaries and mockumentaries screening that night, which was a complete flip and had a variety of skill sets. So it was very interesting because some of the videos were more kind of your typical like vlog style YouTube videos and other ones were like super high scale, incredible production. I definitely loved feeling super inspired because I am a creative person at heart. I am a filmmaker at heart and I really just enjoy seeing other people's processes and the things that they come up with and you know I'm kind of have a new fire lit in me every time I go to a screening like this to go create my own stuff and just try new things. I think the highlight for this screening was definitely Louis Cole's video. I'm sure a lot of you that follow him know that he did a trip around the world in an airplane. Essentially he played just the first like two days of this trip and it was super cool to get to get a little bit of insight into that series and he's hoping I think to pitch it to like Netflix or something which I could totally see it on because it was an incredible production value. 
but also so cool and personal because it was like Louis style of filmmaking and vlogging, but in a much like bigger project scale. So it was neat and I really enjoyed that. And then we came to Saturday, which was a amazing day and an overwhelming day because there were, let me count, one, two, three, four screenings in total. They were pretty much back to back because after every screening, there was a like red carpet meetup kind of thing. And for most of the screenings, there was at least one person that we wanted to meet. And so we pretty much were going all day long and like ran out to get food for a little bit in the middle, but it was exhausting in kind of the best way possible, but it was definitely an adventure. I think as much as I enjoyed all of the films this day, two of my major highlights were some kind of low-key fangirl moments. I feel like I've gotten my fangirl pretty under control at this point. I've been to plenty of YouTube conventions and meetups and things like that. And really when it comes down to it, like, YouTubers are just people who love making stuff and I'm a person who loves making stuff so that like there's not really a big difference between us. Like yes, they might have a ton more followers than I do, but they're still just another human being and there's no reason to like freak out. You can totally respect them and there's nothing wrong with being excited about the content that they create, but I don't know. I just feel like I've kind of passed my fangirl phase, but also was slightly proven wrong just a little bit um, on this day because I got the opportunity to meet Jack Howard from Jack and Dean and oh my gosh guys i have watched jack and dean probably since i was like 12 or 13 like super young well before i ever started making videos on youtube and so to get the opportunity to meet jack was awesome i do wish that dean was there too but even meeting half of that duo was super fun their video was so funny and he was just so so genuine and i like lost the ability to like say more than just like you're awesome i've been watching you guys forever like yeah but he just had this way like he just was there and it like didn't matter who was around us like he was totally into that conversation and so i feel like that in a way made me fangirl because i was like whoa you're like really listening like hello sir like i've watched you for such a long time so that was a really cool moment because i got to meet a filmmaker who inspires me my other fangirl moment of the day was right after the the last screening, the short film screening, I had the opportunity to meet Dom Farah. He is an absolutely amazing creator. I'm sure a lot of you guys haven't heard of him because he's like frustratingly small on YouTube as a filmmaker and like someone who respects higher quality content. Sometimes it's frustrating to see that that's like just doesn't do as well as like more I don't know, like relatable, like low key content that anyone could make, which don't get me wrong, that's great too. But I definitely think that his work, you know, deserves some credit. And anyway, long story short, it was a really cool moment for me because again, I've been watching him since I first started watching YouTube back when YouTube was like first a thing. And like, it was weird to watch YouTube. It was even weirder to be on YouTube. And it was just really cool to get to meet him and tell him that he was one of the people that inspired me to go to film school because he was. A a lot of the reason that I ended up pursuing film was because I saw all these people on YouTube doing these cool projects and coming up with these things and making them happen themselves without needing, you know, Hollywood or the big studios or anything like that. And of course, today that's kind of like a universally accepted thing, but back then it was just, I don't know, really inspiring to me to see someone who was only a few years older than me making it happen and making the projects that he wanted come to life without needing the bigger support and just kind of doing like creative stuff with his friends and having fun with it. So that was probably my biggest fangirl moment of the weekend. <laughs> he put his arm around me for the photo and I was like, crap, he's gonna know now because I was like literally shaking talking to him. But I was like, you know what? At least he knows that I'm genuine and like I really meant what I said. So anyway, that was a really cool moment and definitely one of the highlights of the weekend for me. On Sunday, we had the opportunity to go to Creator Day, which was another series of like panels and talks really just about all kinds of topics related to YouTube from the production process from start to finish to copyright law and all kinds of different topics. And it was really interesting to hear from some of my favorite creators again and just hear a really cool couple of conversations and think about the different things that I wanna do on my channel and how I wanna to continue to grow and be creative and just put things out there. So it was definitely very inspiring. And then last but not least for the weekend, we had the chance to go to the awards ceremony and the red carpet, which was really fun. I loved the red carpet. It felt very legit, like they had these these huge lights set up and like a step and repeat and the whole nine yards and you could just hang out and like creators would kind of slowly make their way down and you could talk to whoever you wanted to. It was really laid back and fun. I think that was one of my favorite things about this entire weekend is like, yes, the feature creators still are kind of separated off and there's security and all of that, but it's not the screaming fan 
they're all like super intense, kind of like VidCon sort of environment. It's a lot more laid back. You can actually talk to people about their work. So that part was really exciting for me for sure. The red carpet was really cool. It was great to see everyone all dressed up and looking just like amazing. And then the award ceremony itself or the awards gala, I guess they called it, was really, really fun because they just kind of made a show of the whole thing. The hosts, their names are escaping me, but they're like one YouTube channel. There was like three or four of them and they were hysterical and all the award presentations were really fun. And then we got to see the award winning videos again, which was all awesome because they were amazing videos. So overall, the entire weekend was just so much fun and so inspiring. And I will totally be back next year. I actually had a moment, one of the days where I was looking at my time hop and the year before I had tweeted saying that I wished I was at Buffer because it was like my dream come true. And then a year later, there I was, and it was absolutely amazing. It was also my first time leaving the country, so Canada, you're awesome. I wanna come back and explore a lot more of you than just Toronto, but I will be back for Toronto too because it's a beautiful city. I feel like I've heard it described as a cleaner New York, and I totally agree with that. It has the same kind of vibe as New York, and it's just clearly there's a lot of like creative people and cool people there and it's a beautiful city and I can't wait to go back and explore more the next time that I get to go. This is also me just trying to manifest the future. I really want to screen at Buffer one day. Next year would be amazing, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. You never know. This weekend was just really inspiring for me and I just cannot be more grateful for the opportunity to be able to go and experience Buffer and meet so many awesome creators, see a lot of amazing things that they made and just be re-inspired to put more creative energy into my YouTube channel because I feel like as much as I do work hard on the videos that I make for this channel, I don't put kind of that full like creative version of myself into it. And I was really kind of reflecting on that and like how much work I put into the videos that I make for Ned, the nonprofit that I work for, and how I kind of want to bring that same work ethic to my YouTube channel because it makes sense to keep like kind of pushing and seeing what boundaries I can break through and you know what cool stuff I can share with you guys. I feel like I have been rambling about this weekend long enough but I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit different than your typical vlog but I thought it would be fun to just kind of sit down and recap it with you guys and just share like all of the positive energy and awesomeness that came out of this weekend. I really just had such an incredible time and even sitting here, I think it's like three weeks later now, I'm just still so giddy thinking about it because it was such a perfect and fun and laid back weekend and I just wish I could go back now, but I'll be back next year for sure. I just need to stop talking about it because I could honestly go on all day and you guys don't need to hear that. So <laughs> I hope that you're having a great day or night whenever you're watching this. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe right down below if you're new here and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!